What's up guys? I got a new video. We're going to be showing you around the new truck I got. It's a 1989 F-150. It's uh, going to be replacing my 4Runner as a vehicle to move stuff around, take stuff to the junkyard, but it needs a lot of work. Um, I'm going to go outside show you in a sec and we're going to get into all exactly what we need to do to it to get it running. And I have already started working on it, but unfortunately, all the uh, videos I filmed with my iPhone, I'm unable to uh, convert them onto my computer for YouTube because of the uh, format of them. So I'm back to using my old camera. Uh, no big deal, but I'm going to be showing you guys what it is exactly I've done so far and what we still have to do. Alright, here is the truck. It's an 89. F-150 extended cab, 8 foot bed, 4 wheel drive. I got this specific truck because, uh, well I needed something with an 8 foot bed for hauling stuff and then uh, I needed something I could put a, uh, possibly put a uh, car seat in if need be. Uh, it's a 302 engine, automatic transmission, it's an AOD 4 speed mechanical. It's got a, it runs and starts has a rough idle. Unfortunately, right now, the uh, ignition actuator, I don't know what the actual name is called, but uh, right in here, this rod, it's an aluminum rod that the ignition cylinder engages. It's actually broken off, and it's a somewhat common um, break in these older trucks. So I'm just gonna wait, uh, wait, wait to order some parts, and then once I get there, I'll throw that on. Uh, you can see I already have the the wheel disassembled, and we actually did already put a new cylinder in here as well with new keys. But uh, before we did that, we actually did already. We started trying to go down the list of things for the misfire it has and after replacing and gapping spark plugs and putting new wires on we we know that we have a some kind of vacuum leak I'm making an EGR back block off plate and then I'm gonna try to cap everything else off and we also have to verify timing I have to get myself a timing light to do that uh, but besides that, as soon as we get that uh, ignition actuator, we're gonna be able to start this thing back up and move forward. I also have a wheel cylinder that's out on it. It's leaking pretty badly. Try to show you guys here. We do have a new carrier bearing that we just installed that thing was completely busted out so we couldn't really uh, <clears throat> move this truck without getting that in there and this body is uh, pretty pretty rusted out <laughs> a lot of people probably thought I was gonna say it was pretty decent but it's not <laughs> the frame however Besides the scaling, there is no actual rust on the frame. It's just pitted and it's got some scaling that needs to be knocked off. But yeah, the body, the body itself is rusted and the bed especially is very rusted. You can see we got daylight there. We do have a lift gate that is going to come off eventually. It's got an electronic hookup that doesn't work at this time. So I guess uh, just for the end of this video I'm going to give this thing a wash. It's going to be a, a lazy wash because I can't get my hose all the way back here. The interior is actually not in too bad shape. 
all things considered, but we're gonna clean it up and try to make it look pretty nice. I've always been curious about how much space these rear seats have had, and to answer that question is not a lot. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm six foot two, and you know it's definitely a struggle to get back there, but it's still better than nothing. These are some really classy, simple looking bucket seats here. If I sit in it, it actually reclines back much farther than I thought it would. Much farther than modern cars do, like my Ford Focus. And it's got a tremendous amount of back support. So this is actually, I could actually sleep in this thing. I'll give you guys an outside view of it, how far back it reclines. And I'll show you guys the back seat space. All right, I'm sitting in the back here. I have the seat uh, pretty much at the farthest forward setting. I'm six foot two, and while my knees are actually not touching the seat, it is not at a good angle to be sitting at. I bet if you wanted to make these seats a little bit more comfortable, if you raised up to this bottom bench, it would actually make it much more comfortable for taller people. And you actually have a good amount of headroom to do it. You know, I got, I don't know, that's at least, that's at least like three inches, so. It's, it does actually have a lot of cushion to it. And I said there wasn't a lot of space, but if I lay sideways, thankfully because of how long this is, I could actually probably sleep back here if I wanted to. With my back against the back here, I've got about a foot's worth of space, maybe a little bit more. Here's uh, underneath the seat. It's actually ripped up out of the floor from rust. And that side actually still is intact, but it, the hinges are not currently attached to this thing, whole thing will just lift off. So yeah, you could totally lift this thing up a little bit and have it be more comfortable, but then you wouldn't be able to slide this thing as easy for easy access. All right, well now we're gonna go ahead and start cleaning it.
All right, now that we did that, we're gonna go ahead and start cleaning uh, the inside out. Both inside and outside, I'm just using household cleaning stuff because uh, you know, I'm not really worried about chemical damage to this truck, especially on the outside. You know, dish soap you're not supposed to use because whatever kind of coating you have, like wax or polish or anything like that, will the dish soap will strip it off. But obviously, that's not a concern with this. And on the inside, you want to worry about things like um, chemicals reacting with plastics and sun fading and stuff like that. Again, not worried about it with this because it's, you know, just a cheap project truck, so. I'm going to go ahead and be cleaning the inside with this. Alright, and here we go. Here's the finished product for now. It's not perfect, but it's a uh, hell, <clears throat> excuse me, hell of a lot better than it was. It smells, I can't even begin to describe how much better it smells. Alright, well, that's going to end part one. Uh, as soon as I get more parts in, I'll start on uh, part two of this video. We're going to install a wheel seal, uh, probably do intake manifold gaskets to try to fix this misfire and make an EGR block off plate, and some more. So uh, make sure you stay updated. I'll see you guys next time.